if your pressure regulator has been installed like this where you cannot get it out because there's a pipe in the way or something else some other obstacle we want to share a lot of great information with you on how to get this problem solved today we're going to go with joe and see why he had to saw a little hole into this pressure reducing valve before he actually had to cut it into pieces to be able to remove it i bet you're wondering if he couldn't remove it in one piece how in the world did he replace it? Well, we're going to show you that as well. All right, before Joe gets started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. The first thing we're going to do to get this party started is cut out a big enough hole in the front to get our shoulders all the way in there. Let me show you what I would actually like to have done here. Now, under the platform, I could not get to these knuckles right here on the housing um, because there was, you know, they're stopping the way. So what would have been nice if I could have done that is to, you know, get the wrench in there and get on those knuckles and remove this housing. And then if you can do that, you can go ahead and rotate the entire pressure reducing valve around until you get it out also if you have this housing off i just want you to be aware of the fact that they do make rebuild kits for these pressure reducing valves um so you can get this diaphragm out through there's a screw back here that you're going to have to hold to get the diaphragm out but this whole assembly pops off like this. And that, that the stem diaphragm comes out. <clears throat> However, if there is any scarring or pitting in any of this area in this brass, um, these rebuild kits just simply won't work. They also make rebuild kits for the Watts 25 AUB and the also the Wilkins Model 70. I myself have never had luck trying to rebuild one of these valves, and I don't have any friends that have had any luck either trying to rebuild these valves. We always end up replacing them. Um, I go back, you know, a few times a year when somebody, one of our clients has tried to rebuild the reducer and you know, there we are trying to get the thing completely replaced. So I'd like to know if any of you guys actually do have luck with this and we will go ahead and leave the links to the rebuild kits in the description below. I was hoping to throw my wrench in here after loosening this nut up and try to turn that valve straight down to remove that housing. But as you can see, I mean, that valve would not budge at all and it didn't help the way that they have these stops positioned around this pressure reducing valve. You just can't get a grip in there. This is how I cut the little hole Renee was talking about. And I cut that little hole in there so I could actually see where the male adapter is that the PRV is attached to because we definitely do not want to cut the threads on that adapter. Now we're going to reach in here with a good sharp metal cutting sawzall blade and we're going to go all the way through this valve until it is literally cut in two pieces so we can, you know, get it out of the way. And fortunately, um, for the last little piece on the left right here that we're fixing to see, we did a good job not cutting all the way through the valve body into the threads of the adapter. So when it comes time to replacing it, we were actually going to have some great threads to work with. Now it's time to clean these threads off so we can apply some fresh Teflon tape and some fresh thread sealant to get ready to get our next PRV in here. So you'll see after I get this Teflon tape on here and some more pipe dope on here that I'm going to go ahead and slip that nut over the adapter, the union nut. Um, you definitely don't want to forget that before you tighten your flange on there or you're going to be very aggravated with yourself. 
I just want to take just a second to show y'all how exactly this works now that we have a little room and you can actually see. Um, so what happens is this valve body to the double union is so much shorter than the valve body that only has a union on one side. So once you get out the old valve, like right here, um, we had to manipulate this line a little bit and thread this off. If there's not some give in the line, um, you're probably gonna struggle to do this. So we got the old valve off. And then earlier in the video, we talked about protecting these threads. And this is why, because you have to screw this flange to the double union valve onto those threads. So you'll screw those on there. And then you will make sure that your um, arrow is in the direction of flow that you need. And you will just tighten that on there like that. Of course, you're gonna get your gaskets in there. So, I, you know, I'll get both nuts started and I'll go back if I need to and slide the gaskets in one at a time, kind of like this. Just, you know, um, the other side of the union kind of acts like an extra hand for you. But anyways, that's how that works is because these valve bodies are, like I said, so much shorter than the other ones that only have union on one side. And I just want you guys to know that this also works for these Watts 25 AUBs and the Watts that also has the double unions, the smaller body valve. However, these Watts regulators with the two unions, the smaller body valves, um, they're pretty notorious for making some odd noises right out of the box. So just be aware of that fact if you choose to try this method with these watch regulators. This is the perfect time to mention that these union nuts are definitely brand specific. Um, what we cut out of there was a Wilkins Model 70. So to make this work, you have to replace it with a Wilkins double union valve and if you're working with a watch regulator, same thing. You have to go back with the watts. Now, all we need to do is get these gaskets slipped in here in the little openings that we have and get everything lined up nice and straight. And that'll be the end of it. We'll go ahead and leave a link in the description to all of these regulators. And we're going to tighten these nuts up right here. And that's going to wrap it up for us. If you found this pressure reducing valve replacement helpful, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Be sure to watch this next video on how to check your pressure and adjust your pressure if your PRV is not too old. And thank you so much for watching.